Welcome to Love and Money Secrets TV. I'm Dame Lillian Walker and I am your host and we are continuing on with chapter one, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Dr. Joe Dispenza. Sorry that we were unexpectedly interrupted at the two hour mark. All the power shut down, my computer shut down, the internet was down, we lost power and for over an hour, I was not able to get back online. We are going to continue today. And I left off speaking about the Zigarznik effect. The Zigarznik effect is basically, if you look it up, you'll learn about the Zigarznik effect, that it is it has to do with the neuroscience of how your brain operates and how it uses energy. And when you have unfinished cycles of action, that are not finished or completed, your brain has open energy leaks because it knows that you still have to finish something. So one of the things that I encouraged you in the previous broadcast was there were three challenges. There's, we started a challenge on the 19th and the challenge is to do three new things every day. And one of them was to make your bed every day and to brush your teeth with your with your non-dominant hand. The objective of making your bed, not only, you know, these three new things are obviously going to increase your IQ because you, as we talked previously, Candell, the researcher discovered when you learn something new, when, for example, reading this book, it's new information, it's new knowledge, it's new information, it's making you think in different ways, it's challenging some of the paradigms and the norms of conventional science, if you will. And so as you learn new things, you actually get smarter because instead of having 1300 neural synapses wiring and firing, instead of 1300 on the left side of your brain, you actually have 2600 on the right side of your brain. Anything that is habitual goes on the left-hand side of your brain because it's routine and it's habit. It's not something that's memorized. It's just something that it's innately done and it's hardwired in your brain. Getting back to what does making your bed have anything to do with not only increasing your IQ, but also retaining your energy. What, what it does to your brain, when you get up in the morning and you now begin to make your bed and you didn't used to make your bed before, what this is signaling to your brain is that sleep is finished. You're done with the activity of sleep. That's why you're making the bed. That cycle of action is now closed. So the energy that's running the program in the base of your, of your brain in your limbic brain is no longer going, Oh yeah. You know, maybe she's going to go back to bed. Maybe she's going to take a nap. No, you made the bed. It's done. That cycle of action for this 24 hour period is complete. So that opens up new resources or more resources for you to take with laser like focus. Now you can be mindful about bringing in all your energy because you're not leaving all these. It's like having computer programs sitting idly in the background of your computer that you're not using, but you're leaving them open. So that's pulling, you know, it's going to slow your computer down. So it's just like you, it's going to slow you down. So you want to be efficient with your energy. So close those energy leaks. So by your making your bed, you are going to learn a new habit. You're signaling to your brain that this cycle of action that we call sleep and rest and restoration, it's complete for this 24 hour period until you undo your bed and turn down your bed for the evening and get back into it again, that's a new cycle of action. It's signaling your brain, okay. That is the significance of making your bed and of what the Zagarznik effect is all about. In the book, we are still in chapter one. It's a long chapter. There's a lot of information, as you know. And we are gonna go back to the section of the book where it says, ask for quantum feedback. So, when you do create purposefully, Request a sign from the quantum consciousness that you have made contact with it. Dare to ask for synchronicities related to your specific desired outcomes. When you do, you are being bold enough to know that the consciousness 
is real and that it is aware of your efforts. Once you accept this, then you can create in a state of joy and of inspiration. This principle asks us to lay down what we think we know, surrender to the unknown, then observe the effects in the form of feedback in our lives. So at that, and that is the best way we learn. When we get positive indications, when we see our external circumstances shift in a favorable direction, we know that whatever we did inside of us was right. So naturally we'll remember what we did so we can do it again. And so when we, when we get feedback and the feedback begins to occur in your life, you can choose to be like a scientist in a process of discovery. Why not monitor any changes to see what the universe is favorable to your efforts and prove to yourself that you are powerful. So how can we connect with the state of consciousness? Quantum physics is nonsense. Newtonian physics postulated that there is always a linear series of interactions that are predictable and repeatable. You know, if A plus B equals C, then C plus D equals E, or C plus D plus E equals F. In the wacky world of the quantum model of reality, everything is intercommunicating within a higher dimensional field of information that is holistically entangled beyond space and time as we know it. So one reason why quantum physics is so elusive is that for years we have been accustomed to thinking based on our senses, our five senses. If we measure and reaffirm reality with our senses, we are stuck in the Newtonian paradigm. Instead, the quantum, that quantum model demands that our understanding of reality not be based on our senses. Quantum physics is nonsense. Not nonsense, but nonsense. In other words, it doesn't, it's not predicated upon your five senses. So in the process of creating future reality via the quantum model, our senses should be the last to experience what the mind has created. It's backwards from what everybody thinks. Think about it. So your five senses are supposed to sense those things after you've manifested it. And what most people are doing is they're trying to use their five senses to guide their lives and to create a different future outcome. But if you're doing that, you're doing it backwards, unbeknownst to you. What's fascinating about this is that as children, we didn't rely on our sense of hearing, smelling, tasting, seeing, and touching. We were more intui cognizant. It's, it's a word that I use to describe when you have a certain knowingness and when you use your intuition combined with that knowingness, that's an intui cognizant ability. I, I for one, I'm, I'm like super intui cognizant where people ask me quite often, especially in the last year, you're like, how did you know? So, you know, I don't, these are complete strangers that I've been doing neuro health resets and different processes that I've guided, guided them through to help them relieve from pain whether it's physical, emotional, psychological, or spiritual pain, or to help them manifest something. And as I received that intuitive, that intuicognizant hit, then I, I tell them, you know, this may or may not resonate with you, but the sense that I'm getting is X, Y, Z. And they're like, oh my gosh, that is so spot on. And it's because I've learned not to use my five senses and to tap into that intuition and to not doubt it. And I know that even when people are telling me, oh, no, 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 I know when they're embarrassed and when it's ego that's not allowing them to be truthful with me, which is okay. I'll, I'll let somebody <laughs> save face. I'm not about to, you know, that's not my job. 
inevitably those people, something happens later that it's confirmed, even though I'm not looking for confirmation. I don't need that. It's not, it's not about me after all. It's, this is, it's a matter of assisting that person. So instead, the quantum model demands that our understanding of reality not be based on our senses, the five senses, quantum physics is nonsense. In the process of creating future reality via the quantum model, our senses should be the last to experience what the mind has created. So the very last thing we experience is sensory feedback. Now, why? The quantum is a multi-dimensional reality. Pause button. Listen closely. Read this. If you've got your books with you, make sure you read along. Your brain needs to register this information and recognize it. The quantum is a multidimensional reality that exists beyond your senses in a realm world where there is no body, no thing, no time. So it's existing in many other dimensions. It doesn't say here in an infinite number of dimensions, but I am going to go out on a limb now standing where I am, ex having experienced what I've experienced. I would say that that realm exists, not just in a multidimensional reality, but in, it's an infinite number of dimensional realities. It really is infinite. Okay. You don't have to believe me. This is not about belief just observe and see what resonates with you suspend your disbelief and when you're doing your meditations there's you know we're all connected to we're connected with each other and we're connected all with the great i am with that unified feel that the wave forms of energy that always has does and will continue to always exist and whatever number of dimensions that there are. It's an infinite number of dimensions. You can pose the question and ask for proof. I don't know what kind of proof it's going to give you. All I know is that it's shown me some pretty spectacular things, which is why I can speak from a place of such knowingness and such truth and recognition, unwavering recognition, because I have experienced things that are, some of them are very difficult to even articulate. So it's all exciting though. It's all good. Thus to move into that domain and create from that paradigm, that thought process, you'll need to forget about your body for a little while. Yeah. So when you go into the meditation, the first thing you do is you're going deep, you're choosing. And if you don't know how to choose or how to go deep, just pretend you just tell your brain, okay, we're going to make believe that I'm going into the deepest theta state I have ever been. I'm going to go into the deepest trans ever. It's going to be the best meditation ever. I am the most genius at this. It's just you. Nobody else is there to judge you. It's just you. So stop judging yourself and choose to embrace the higher, the best, the most loving perspective of yourself and say, okay, I got this. I don't know how you don't need to know how you just do it, claim it, do it. Okay. So you're going to need to forget about your body. As you go deep, you eventually don't feel your body. You don't feel your physical body. And before you know it, you go somewhere. You also have to temporarily shift your awareness away from your external environment. All those things that you identify with in your current life, your spouse, your kids, your possessions, and your problems are all part of your identity. Through them, you identify with the outer world. And finally, you will have to lose track of linear time. That is in the moment when you are intentionally observing a potential future and a, a potential future experience, you will have to be so present that your mind no longer vacillates between memories of the past and expectations of a same as usual future. Isn't it ironic that to influence your reality, your environment, heal your body or change some event in your future time. You have to completely let go of your external world. No thing. You have to release your awareness of your body. 
no body. You have to lose track of time, no time. In effect, you have to become pure consciousness. So I'm going to pause right here because I think some people read that and it's like, I don't really get that whole thing about becoming pure consciousness. I mean, what, how do you do that? What does that, what does that really mean? What does that feel like? I don't get it. Okay. So this is, this is for me, this is how I've been able to understand it and what I, I know to be true because as I've implemented the formula, I get incredible manifestations across the board. So I always equate my conscious awareness with the conscious state where let's say right now I'm going to choose to look at my hand, which incidentally, what I'm about to tell you to do is a meditation, make no mistakes. Okay. I'm going to choose to look at my hand. I'm going to observe my hand. And up until a moment ago, I really didn't even feel my hand. Sure. I could feel myself holding my Kindle. I could feel myself um, doing things, but I really wasn't conscious, so to speak of my hand. But now that I'm holding my hand out and I'm actually looking at my hand and I am paying attention to the lines in my palm, I'm feeling my fingertips. Now that I can feel my fingertips, I actually feel a tingly sensation of energy on my nail beds, which just a second ago I didn't feel. Ooh, and now I'm starting to feel a little energy moving in my hands. My hands are getting a little warmer too. My fingers are now starting to, I could actually feel the pulse in my fingers from the fingertips, it's really pronounced now in my fingertips, going through my palm. I almost feel like uh, an energy pulling in the very center of my palm. Very interesting. Okay, that, believe it or not, is a meditation. That focus on my hand, while I was doing that, I did not feel the rest of my body. I wasn't feeling my butt sitting on this chair. I wasn't feeling my feet on the floor. I wasn't feeling my elbows on my desk. I wasn't feeling my left hand holding my Kindle. I was really unaware of all of those things. I was just the awareness, the consciousness. I was using my free will to take my conscious view of my hand and observation and sensation of the feelings in my hand. That is your conscious awareness. And that is the beginning of you becoming no one, nobody, no thing, nowhere, in no place, and in no time. Pure and simple. Now, if while I was observing my hand, for argument's sake, just to give you a point of contrast and to give you also definition, to give you a distinction so that you're able to differentiate your conscious awareness that has free will versus the organ of your brain. I always refer to that as it being on my left side. And my ego is also on my left side. It might be different for you. So you maybe for you, it switched around. But for me, my conscious awareness is on my right. And you need to pay attention to location because that's how your brain files information. It's always, it's your proprioceptor system, which gives you a sense of orientation, what's in front, what's behind, what's next to you. Memories are stored depending on where you were relative to whatever it was that happened. If somebody was speaking to you on the left-hand side, that memory is stored and that energy is stored with an awareness of it being on your left, as opposed to it, if something fell from the ceiling and hit you on the head, then, then it's stored from this angle into your brain and so on and so forth. If something hits you from behind, again, it's stored behind you. So it has to do with the eight different sensory systems of the brain. We're not going to get into that right now. If you're interested in watching the Facebook live video that I did on, on, uh, how to do a neuro reset to 
get rid of pain. I explain a little bit more the eight different sensory systems. That's not what this is all about here, but it does tie into this. So I want you to be aware your consciousness is on the right for most of you, I think, and you're going to recognize that that conscious awareness, you can choose to focus on your hand, on a book, on a pen, that consciousness where it's not really arguing with it, if you're just choosing to focus, that is your conscious, your conscious state. Next, there's the organ of your brain. Your, or, the, the brain, the language of the brain are thoughts and the language of the body is emotions. Your brain files away the emotions that you feel based on the neurochemistry that your body is creating at the moment of an event. And it's a your body's a filing cabinet, as is your brain. So it files away, it stores the emotions in your body and the thoughts in your brain. And then there's your ego. Your ego is the one that thinks, if I'm looking at the same hand doing the same meditation, paying attention to the lines in my hands and the feelings, it says, I'm not doing this right. Maybe I got this wrong. Maybe I'm the only one who's not going to get, everybody else is going to get this, but nope, I'm the only one who's not going to figure this out. Everybody else is smarter than me. Or I'm just, you know what? Maybe I'm just not looking at it right. Maybe my hand's not angled right. Or maybe, maybe I should focus more with my left eye than my right eye. Maybe I should be going back and forth between my left and my right eye. Every single one of those comments that I just mentioned are ego statements that come from our brain because our brain and our ego are partners, okay? Our brain is just a vibrational interpreter of the emotions that are in your body and of the thoughts that your ego sends as well as the memories that are stored in your brain. And then, the, then there's the false you, the shadow, some people call it your shadow side, the false you, the false self, your dark side, if you will, is the one that is not, doesn't say loving thoughts. It's always communicating lack. You're falling short. You're not worthy. You're not doing it right. Maybe you're, maybe you're just not smart enough. Maybe you're never going to get this. Anything that follows that kind of vibe that you're, everybody else is going to get it, but not you. You're not smart enough. You're not tall enough. You're not thin enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not whatever. It's, it's always expressing or implying, creating doubt, or that you are going to fall short, that you're not going to be enough, that you're not good enough, yada, yada, yada. You get the picture, I think, right now. Once you recognize that all those thoughts are not loving things to say to somebody else, let alone to say to yourself, and you recognize, oh, wait a minute, my conscious awareness, my conscious awareness doesn't think that. That's my ego and my brain that are talking. My brain is allowing my ego to surface because it thinks that it's the master because you have allowed it to be the master for, some people have allowed it for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, six years. It depends how old you are. I don't know you specifically who are looking at me through this video at this very moment in time. I don't know how old you are. It doesn't matter. You could be 80. So if you've been, it's possible that you've been doing this for, if you're 80, you've probably been doing this for like 84, 85, 86 years, depending on how soon you got out of the theta state as a child. Usually children are in theta state from birth until they're about five, six, maybe even seven years old. Once in a blue while, you'll have a kid that'll be nine years old and they're still in theta state. But most kids get out of theta state between six and eight years of age. And that's when the ego starts to come in and it's as a direct result of the conditioning from whoever it is, who's your caretakers, teachers, society, and so forth. Okay. So we're going to move on back into the book. So do that. And you have dominion over the environment, your body and time. I affectionately call these the big three. Remember what Nicholas Tesla said that the magic to unlock all the magic in the universe, all you have to do is unlock the secret of three, six, nine. Three, six, nine. All multiples of three. You know, there's two threes and six and three threes and nines. So three, six, nine. Remember that. 
And here it's telling you the big three. So, and since the subatomic world of the field is made purely of consciousness, like your consciousness, you cannot enter any other way than via pure consciousness yourself. Pause. That is how, my friends and gems, you become one with the one and you are the one. When you set your brain aside and say, brain, you are no longer the master. I am the master. You are my servant. Ego, you're not my amigo. You're my enemigo. Heal. Stay. I don't need you anymore. You served a purpose. You are bringing light now to my consciousness. I am very aware of the distinction. I am not those thoughts that you keep on feeding me those thoughts that my brain keeps on interpreting as vibrations, whether it's in my body or thoughts and memories in my head, I realize I'm none of those things. I'm not my name. I'm not my profession. I'm not my accomplishments. I'm not my diplomas. I'm not my bank account. I am conscious awareness. And when you are one with the one, you are the one. That's the gateway through which you enter. Ah, now, my friends and gems, you can mold the subatomic potential energy waveforms because now you are focusing your awareness on the subatomic particle potential energy waveforms. And it's slowly but surely starting to turn into particles and the more you observe the more you observe the more they merge and they start to coalesce and quantify and multiply till boom you have a manifestation in 3d reality you cannot walk through the door into the quantum field as some body you must enter as a no body your brain has the innate ability to harness this skill. Stay tuned for more. When you understand that you are fully equipped to do all of this, equipped to do all of this and leave this world behind and enter a new reality beyond space and time, you will be naturally inspired to apply it to your life. Boom, boom, boom. But I'm fine. End of story. What this is telling you is that the key to this is getting into that deep theta state of consciousness, slowing down your heart rate, slowing down your breath, slowing down your brain. That is your intention. That's what you've chosen. You've commanded your brain and your body to do with your consciousness. Okay, brain, we are now going to hit the pause button. I'm going to slow down my heart rate. I'm going to slow down my breath. I'm going to slow down my brain waves. I'm going to take 10 deep breaths. At the end of the 10 breaths, I am going to be in deep theta state, deeper than I've ever been before. And I'm going to go into 5D consciousness. And I'm going to be no one, nobody, no thing, nowhere, no place, in no time. I'm going to leave all this behind. No different than what you do every night when you go to sleep. You do this, you're doing this every single day already. When you go to sleep, you don't feel your body. You don't feel time. You don't. You cannot say it's been 10 minutes. It's been an hour. It's been three hours. No, you have no notion of time because usually when you go to sleep, you actually leave your body. You become no one, nobody, no thing, nowhere, no place in no time. And many of us, most of us, and I'm going to say the great majority of us, when we go to sleep, we actually leave our bodies. We actually act, astral project. Sometimes we have lucid dreams. Some of us remember it. Some of us don't. Some of us do the lucid dreaming on purpose. Some of us do the astral projection on purpose. But a lot of us do it for a long time without knowing how we do it. It's a natural state of being that everybody does. Children do it all the time. You do it less as you get as you become 
as you get older, again, because of conditioning, paradigms, thought processes, and so forth, but you still do it, even if you choose not to do it, it's still happening to you. You just may not recall it. You can also train yourself to recall more of your astral projections while you're sleeping and more of your lucid dreams so that you can benefit from the knowledge that you're gaining while you're going out into quantum. That is another topic altogether. Going beyond space and time. What does it mean to go beyond space and time? These are constructs that humans created to explain physical phenomena involving location and our sense of the temporal. So when we talk about a glass sitting on a table, we reference it in terms of location. So where it is in space and how long it has occupied that location. So as humans, we're obsessed with these two conceptions, where we are and how long we've been there. So where we'll go next. And even though time is not something that can, we can actually sense, we feel it passing in much the same way that we sense our location in space. We feel the seconds, minutes, and hours passing by just as we feel our bodies pressed against our chairs and our feet planted on the ground. So in the quantum field, the infinite probabilities for materializing reality are beyond time and space because a potential doesn't yet exist. So if it doesn't exist, it doesn't have a location or occupy a position temporally, which is temporarily. Anything that doesn't have material existence, that hasn't had its waves of probability collapsed into particle, reality exists beyond space and time. Pause, that's what gives us the opportunity to mold that clay. So since the quantum field is nothing but immaterial probability, it's potential. It is outside of space and time. And as soon as we observe one of those infinite probabilities and give it material reality, it acquires those two characteristics. But my friend and gems, it needs you and you to make it so it can occupy time and space. To enter the field, enter a similar state. So great, we have the power to make material reality out of our own choosing by selecting it from the quantum field. Oh my gosh, you guys, isn't this exciting? I'm sure the revelations, the thoughts in your head, you're going, oh my gosh, the ahas, that's what happened to me. And that's why I, it's not good enough to just read these books once. No, these are textbooks, my friends and gems. These are textbooks for you to savor, for you to dive in deep, for you to make it your own, for you to test, explore, repeat, you know the formula, try, fail, adjust, try, fail, adjust, try, fail, adjust, try, succeed, succeed, woohoo, succeed, 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 succeed. You keep on going and you keep on trying and trying and you keep on adjusting and making whatever necessary changes so you continue to succeed, to succeed, to succeed. And as you move forward, you're going, oh my gosh, I got this. Then whatever doubt that you have starts to dissolve till eventually it's completely gone because you know, oh, I know I can, whatever it is, I know I can fix it, get it, change it, morph it, transmute it, alchemize it. I don't care what verb, what adjective you want to use. You can change it to your liking, to your wanting, because you are now conscious. You are aware. You are actually putting your hands on the steering wheel of your life, of your conscious experience as a being and going, oh, you know what? I'm going to go left. I'm mindfully on purpose deciding to go left or 
go straight or make a right or go in whatever direction you want to create whatever it is that you want. Okay, so to enter the field, you're gonna enter a similar state, conscious to unconscious. Remember, I am the one, I'm one with the one, I am the one. That was a mantra that was given to me as I was meditating on the beach in Cancun on the um, Mayan Riviera. It was amazing. It was just, and, and the moment I heard it, I knew to embrace it and start saying it every day, all the time, whether I was meditating or not. I'm one with the one, I am the one. I, just saying it gives me joy, makes me grateful, makes me appreciative, ups my vibe. I'm one with the one, I am the one. And I hope that it does the same thing for you. It's possible that in 5D, a different languaging might come to you, but borrow mine, use mine until then. I'm sure I'm not the only one that's been given that mantra. I'm sure somebody else on the planet uses it too. I don't own it. It was just given to me and I'm just sharing to you what was what, what I have experienced and it works for me. So if it works for me, it can work for you. So great, we have the power to make material a reality of our own choosing by selecting it from the quantum field. So, but we have to somehow access that field, right? So we're always connected to it. Remember, you're never disconnected. You're, ne you're never out of vibrational frequency from it. You're always connected to it. You may not be at the optimal vibrational frequency. You might be in a low vibe of sadness, depression, anger, fear, worry, hurry, anxiety, regret, remorse, whatever. In order to manifest, you have to be in a state of unconditional love, appreciation, and gratitude. So do whatever you need to do, whatever it is, as Abraham Hicks says, Esther channels Abraham, and she says, you have to be willing, make no mistake, you have to be willing to pay the price of joy. Yeah, that's the cost of admission, friends and gems. You have to be willing to pay the price of joy. So if you have to watch comedies every night to get yourself in a higher vibing state so that you forget everything that you didn't want during the day so that then you can do a meditation in a higher vibrational state and maybe you, or maybe some of you don't have to watch comedies. Maybe all you have to do is pet your dog or pet your cat, or maybe sit down and play some music, listen to some music or play if you're, a musician like myself, maybe you just need to sit down at the piano or pick up your guitar, pick up your flute, pick up your saxophone, pick up your keyboard, whatever, create music, whatever the case may be, but get your vibe up and you're, now you're like, oh, I feel better, I feel more energized, I feel more revived, I feel, I feel more hopeful, I feel more joyous. Even smiling in front of a mirror I think it's like 28 muscles that you have in your face just by making a smile. It takes more, it takes more muscles to frown than it does to smile. But just putting a smile on your face will inherently make you feel better. And because we are connected to our body so acutely, sitting up straighter, like people who are depressed usually hunch over and usually they don't talk as clearly. But people who are confident, people, look at Olympians, look at Olympic athletes. They all have good posture. They stand straight. Tony Robbins is the first one that will tell you. It's like, you want to change your, your state? You want to change your emotions? First thing to do, the fastest way to do that is with your body. Sit up straight, stand up. Like I said earlier in previous broadcast, holding up your hands in the victory pose. This is what Olympians do when they cross the finish line from running, being, you know, winning the gold from, you know, uh, pole vaulting, from throwing the disc, from swimming, whatever the case might be. They always go like this. So if you're standing and you're doing, you're holding this pose for two minutes, and if you're jumping in place, now not only are you boosting your testosterone level, boosting your energy, boosting your willpower, but as you bounce on your feet, you also are giving yourself a lymphatic flush, believe it or not, which is fantastic for your immune system too. You're doing wonders for your body just 
two minutes. Everybody has two minutes to spare. So you do this. Golly gee whiz. You actually feel better. Imagine that. Now you go, you go brush your teeth. You're gonna go brush your teeth with your left hand. Remember the challenge. You're gonna brush your teeth with your non-dominant hand and you're going to be smiling and you're probably gonna be laughing because you're gonna go, oh my gosh, this feels so strange. It's so weird. But remember, doing these the three things, you're actually getting smarter. You're, you're actually increasing your energy, getting smarter, raising your IQ. Your brain early in the day is being lit up like a Christmas tree because you started doing this number. Now you're smiling, you're brushing your teeth. You might be laughing now genuinely because you're like, this is so ridiculous. It's so funny. I can't believe I decided to do this 30 day challenge starting on you know, May 19th. I'm gonna take this till June 19th. Let's see what the, what the results are 30 days from now. I would be shocked if you had no results. There's something seriously I don't know anybody who hasn't had positive results from this, but like I said, you're going to feel better and you're going to actually have more inspiration. All sorts of other things are going to come from this. But remember, victory pose, jump on your feet. And at the same time, just two minutes, smile, brush your teeth with your non-dominant hand, and you're going to make your bed when you get out of bed to signal to your brain you're done with sleeping for this 24-hour period, not until tonight when you go back to bed. And now that is gonna give you some extra energy that you didn't have before. So you have three different th things that are actually giving you more energy. Constantly emitting energy and therefore sending information to the field and receiving information from it. How do we communicate more effectively with it? In upcoming chapters, I will talk at length about how to enter the field. For now, what you need to know is that to enter the field, which exists beyond space and time, you have to enter a similar state. So do you ever have any experiences when time and space seem to disappear? Think of those moments when you're driving and your thoughts are focused on some concern you have. When that happens, you forget about your body. You are no longer aware of how you feel in space. You forget about the environment, the external world disappears and you forget about time. You have no idea how long you have transed out. At moments like these, you've been at the threshold of the door that allows you to enter the quantum field and gain access to working with universal intelligence. In essence, you've already made thought more real than anything else. So later on, I will provide instruction on how to move into that state of consciousness regularly to access the field and to communicate more directly with the universal intelligence that animates all things. So later on, I will provide instruction on how to move into the state of consciousness regularly to access the field and to communicate more directly with the universal intelligence that animates all things. Friends and gems, we are on page 34 out of 298. Change your mind, change your life. Isn't this getting good? Okay, as this chapter has progressed, I've led you from the notion that mind and matter are fully separable to the quantum model, which states that they are inseparable. Mind is matter and matter is mind. So all those times in the past when you tried to change, maybe your thinking was fundamentally limited. You likely believe that it was always circumstances outside of you that needed to change. If I didn't have so many other commitments, I could lose the excess weight and then I'd be happy. We've all stated some variation of that theme. If this, then that, cause and effect. What if you could change your mind your thoughts, your feelings, and your way of being outside of the bounds of time and space. What if you could change ahead of time and see the effects of those internal changes in your external world? You can. What has profoundly and positively changed my life, that's what Dr. Joe is saying, and I'm gonna parallel that and say what has positively changed my life too, and the lives of so many others is the understanding 
that changing one's mind and thereby having new experiences and gaining new insights is simply a matter of breaking the habit of being yourself. That's it. That's the coup de grace. That is the crowning glory. The thing that you need to reach for is breaking the habit of being yourself. So simple, not easy, but very, very simple. Like golf, the objective is when you tee off in golf and you smack that ball with a driver, the objective is simple. You just want to get that little ball in that little hole, three, five hundred, however many yards away it is. Simple, not easy, but simple but definitely very doable and a lot easier than that. But now that you know how to do, now that you're learning how to do this process of going from this conscious state and becoming one with the one and you are the one, that's gonna be easy too. Mark my words. It positively changed my life and the lives of so many others that changing one's mind and thereby having new experiences and gaining new insights is simply a matter of breaking the habit of being oneself. When you overcome your senses, when you understand that you are not bound by the chains of your past, when you give life, a life that is greater than your body, your environment and time, all things are impossible. The universal intelligence that animates the existence of all things will both surprise and delight you. It wants nothing more than to provide you with access to all you want. In short, when you change your mind, you change your life. So, and a child shall lead them is the next header. Before we move on, I'd like to share a story that just illustrates just how powerful and effective being in contact with greater intelligence can be in making change an integral part of your life. My children, now young adults, have used a meditation similar to the process I will describe to you in part three of this book. And as a result of practicing these techniques, they've manifested some remarkable adventures. So since their childhood, we've had an agreement that they work on creating material things or events that they want to experience. However, our rule is that I don't interfere or assist with producing the outcome. They have to encourage to create these intended realities on their own, using their minds and interacting with the quantum field. So my 20 something year old daughter studies art in college. Pause button, I have to say, one of the things that Dr. Joe and I have in common is that we both have three kids and he has a daughter who studied art, so do I. <laughs> my daughter is an amazing manifester. And in fact, one of the things that I did with that, all three of them, when they turned 14 years old, when, I, when they went to high school, I gave them a leather bound gold embossed copy of Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And I made it a requirement that they read that. And inevitably they wanted something. Like I think my son, one of my sons wanted a cell phone when he was 14. Cause I didn't give my kids cell phones when they're younger kids. Cause I know about the EMF waves of cell phones. And I knew that their brain, their skulls weren't thick enough to be able to I don't want to subject them to that because I know that it's really unhealthy. So my son, of course, like my other two kids, he wanted a cell phone like they had. So I told him, okay, I want you to read this book. This book will show you how to get that cell phone. Long story short, my daughter, <laughs> uh, actually my three kids are pretty good manifestors, but my daughter seemed to have an even more innate ability to manifest things trips, Uggs, I mean, you name it. Um, and she's still a good manifester. My 20 something daughter studies art in college. It was springtime and I asked what she wanted to manifest during an upcoming summer break. So she had a laundry list. Instead of the typical college student home for the summer job, she wanted to work in Italy, learn and experience new things, visit at least six Italian cities, spend one week in Florence since she had friends there and she wanted to work for the first six weeks of the summer, make a decent wage, then spend the rest of the break at home. So I commended my daughter for her clear vision. 
of what she wanted and reminded her that the universal intelligence would orchestrate the way for her to have her summer dream and have it manifest. She would take care of the what it was that she wanted and a greater consciousness would handle the how. So since my daughter is practiced in the art of thinking and feeling ahead of the actual experience, I merely reminded her to not only set an intention every day with regard to what the summer would look like and feel like and what people she would see, what events would transpire, what places she would visit, but also to feel what it would be like to experience these things. I asked her to recreate the vision in her mind until it was so clear and real that she thought she was thinking became the experience and her brain's synapses began to wire that information as if it was a reality. If she was still being the young woman in the dorm room with a dream of going to Italy, then she was still the same person living the same reality. So while it was still March, she had to begin being that young woman who'd been in Italy for half the summer. No problem, she said. She would had experiences like this before when she wanted to be in a music video and when she wanted to experience an unlimited shopping spree, both of these transpired in perfect elegance. I then reminded my daughter, you can't get up from your mental creation of this experience as the same person you were when you sat down. You have to get up from your seat as if you just had the most amazing summer of your life. I got it, she said. She understood. <sighs> she understood my reminder that each day she had to change to a new state of being. And after every mental creation, she was to go about her day living in the elevated mood of gratitude generated by having had that experience. So my daughter called a few weeks later. She said, Dad, the university is offering an art history summer course in Italy. I can get the cost of the program and all expenses down from $7,000 to $4,000. Can you help pay for that? Well, it's not that I'm an unsupportive parent, but this didn't strike me as what she had originally stated as her target. She was trying to control the outcome of this possible destiny instead of allowing the quantum field to orchestrate events. I advised her to really inhabit that Italian trip and to think, feel, speak, and dream in Italian until she got lost in that experience. And a few weeks later, when she called again, her excitement was palpable. She had been in the library chatting with her art history teacher and they eventually slipped into speaking Italian. Both spoke the Italian language fluently. At that point, her teacher said, I just remembered. One of my colleagues needs someone to teach level one Italian to some American students who will be studying in Italy this summer. Of course, my daughter was hired. Get this, not only would she be paid to teach, all expenses covered, but she would be in six different cities in Italy for six weeks, spend the last week in Florence and be able to be home for the second half of summer. She manifested her dream job and every aspect of her original vision. This wasn't the case of a young woman pursuing this opportunity with the traditional dogged determination to find a program, searching the internet, hounding professors and so forth. Uh -uh. Instead of following cause and effect, my daughter changed her state of being to, to the extent that she was causing an effect. She was living by the quantum law. Ladies and gentlemen, you have the book. So I would encourage you, read, reread, and relive, live vicariously through this young girl's thoughts, feelings, actions, and emotions. Reread that section, embody it for yourself, substitute whatever it is that you want. If you want a vacation or a trip 
to wherever, if you want a car, if you want a job, if you want a business, if you have a business and you want it to do a course correction and maybe change industries in light of the new global circumstances that we're in, if you want to be made aware of a need that would be fun, joyous, exciting, and effortless for you to adjust in so that you could prosper with abundance, with joy and levity and ease and flow so that the universe rises up to be the wind beneath your wings so that doors start flinging open for you. All of that is well within your power. All of it. She was living by the quantum law, and so can you as she electromagnetically connected to an intended destiny that existed in the quantum, her body was then drawn to the future event. The experience found her. This has happened to me so many times. I cannot even begin to tell you. Some of you who have watched more of my videos, you will see I have evidence of things that I manifested that were truly impossible. Before I started manifesting at that level, my motto was dream the impossible dream. It's possible and oh my gosh it is so true and in this book and becoming supernatural we have the formula it's given to you so that you can do it too the experience found her the outcome was unpredictable because you don't know how you don't know how and you don't know when you have no idea how long it'll, it'll take but it doesn't matter your attitude has to be you know what i put the i put the commands into my computer I saved the document, it's in there, it's done, the order is in. I don't know when, I don't know how, it doesn't matter. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm, I've got a surprise coming my way and it's gonna be even more spectacular than I even thought or imagined, which is what makes it so exciting and so juicy and so delicious and which is what encourages you to do it more and more and more. The experience found her and the outcome was unpredictable. It came in a way that she in no way expected. It was synchronistic and there was no doubt that it was a result of her internal efforts. Think about what and think about that for a moment. What opportunities are out there waiting to find you and you? Who are you being in this moment and every other moment? Is your being that way going to attract to you all that you desire? Can you change your state of being? And once you inhabit a new mind, can you observe a new destiny? The answers are what the rest of this book is all about. That, my friends, is the conclusion of chapter one. I am so thankful and grateful to have you this evening and to be on this broadcast and at whatever point in time you are watching this video make no mistakes that it is the perfect time you have been searching for answers you've been seeking you've been knocking on doors the door is open now you've been asking questions you are getting answers now this is part of your answer God answers prayers. You've been asking God, oh God, dear God, please help me. Just show me what do I need to do? Show me how, show me where, show me who. This is how it's manifesting for you right now. And this is just a launch pad for you because you're gonna finish watching this video. It's going to mull over in your brain. You may choose to watch this video again as you're going to sleep, maybe you will do a brief meditation. And after you're done with your meditation, you might decide, I'm going to listen to that chapter again. I'm going to fall asleep to it because I want it to be in my conscious and my subconscious mind. And maybe you'll listen to these videos over and over and over again. That's what I did. I went to sleep many and many, many a night listening to chapters. I would just set, set it on and I would just listen to chapter after chapter after chapter you know on youtube you can put autoplay and so it's in your playlist you know this is all under breaking breaking the habit of becoming yourself so you can just put it in the playlist and you can listen to it over and over and over again and go from one chapter to the next chapter now we have chapter one which was two hours long we have chapter one part two which is approximately an hour a little over an hour long and so this is 
great content for you to learn, apply, review, embrace, go deeper. And you don't have to be, um, uh, you know, some extraordinary human being. Just by your taking the action steps and your desire to embrace this and to apply this, you're already by definition extraordinary. But make no mistakes, your level of extraordinariness is not conditioned upon anything that you were doing. You were born extraordinary. You were born unconditional love. And you were just coming back home to that unconditional love and silencing the thoughts, the emotions, your ego, any ancestral energies that still lurk amongst you. You can clean all of that up and this is how. So thank you for tuning in, tapping in, turning on. Oh, and I have to say thank you, a shout out to M from the UK um, and e Eli who um, made donations. My gosh, my heart, I was so surprised. Thank you, thank you so much. It just warmed my heart. It made me feel, it literally made my body tingle all over. I was just so thrilled. It was so unexpected. And so I really appreciate those donations from the bottom of my heart. It just um, made my day. And um, so I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. And, um, and I want to ask of you, have you been affected by Go Love 20? Right now, there's about half a million people around the world who have been affected by Go Love 20. The question is, have you? If you don't know what Go Love 20 is, then the answer is no. And we can take care of that for you. There's already a mutation to Go Love 20. But first things first, you got to get affected by Go Love 20 too. So if you would like to be affected by Go Love 20, let me know. I would be more than honored to affect you with Go Love 20. You can YouTube search Go Love 20 and you'll see Dr. Joe's um, explanation of that. And uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. So. Ciao for now, my friends and gems. Thank you for joining us at Love and Money Secrets TV, Breaking the Habit of Becoming Yourself, Part 2.